HITC Sport, at least this is just weird. And yeah, I'm doing my Premier League predictions for the weekend, but then I'll be reacting to the outcome of these games next week on another channel. I mean, this is weird. It's like airing The Sopranos on TV and then telling the audience to tune into another channel to watch the next episode. It's just weird. But anyway, listen, let's get on with the Premier League predictions for this game week. All right, let's go. Brighton versus Liverpool. All right, this is it. I'm calling out you on your behavior. I know, that makes me sound like a disgruntled primary school teacher who's just found a student smearing their own poo on the toilet walls. But no, 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 okay. During the first half of this season, all of you were busy licking the toes of Brighton and Hove Albion, queuing up to massage Graham Potter's ego with MS brand Vaseline. Right? Oh, he was doing a miracle job guiding Bright into the top half, playing football according to the gospel of Johan Cruyff, right? While Newcastle, stale old Newcastle, they, they were odds on for relegation, right? I mean, it's a team who had to wait 14 games and 3 months to see their first win. This is a team who everyone thought would consign themselves as being the worst team in Premier League history, while Brighton were scrapping for the Champions League, right? Well, uh, guess what, lads? This expansive Barcelona themed Brighton project is uh, going to finish behind Newcastle. Castle in the Premier League. Despite being given a three month head start while the Magpies were suffocating under Steve Bruce's nipple fat, right now Brighton and Hove Albion are hopeless. They're no longer able to nick the 1 1 draw, and right now we're about to watch them lose five games in a row. But will the media question the Golden Boy Graham Potter? No, these journalists would rather eat a cake laced with rat poison before scooping out their eye with a spoon than speak ill of their flavour of the month. Honestly, Liverpool are on a mission. They just won seven league games in a row, keeping five clean sheets along the way. I mean, do you really think they're gonna trip up at Brighton? If they do, I'll smear dog food all over my face. This won't even be close. I have a feeling this is a game where Luis Diaz establishes himself as Luis Suarez Mark II. And he'll belt in a stunning hat trick. Liverpool will win 5 0, with Potter looking every inch about as tackling astute as Steve Keane. I mean, remember him? That Blackburn Rovers egg? Who, by all rights, Surely better suited to playing darts in a pub. Brentford versus Burnley. Brentford needed that win in Norwich last week. That was arguably the most important result of the season. As if they'd lost that, I think Brentford fans might as well have started picking out suits for their Premier League funeral. But forget it, because this, this is their mammoth monster game now. If Brentford win this match, they're staying up. They'll be on 30 points, a solid 9 ahead of Burnley. I mean, they can practically smell safety, but it'll be difficult. Because playing against Burnley is no nice picnic. Someone is going to lose their teeth. I mean, honestly, try and challenge Ben Mee at corner kicks, and you'll probably be sneezing blood for a week. I mean, survival is attainable, but... It's going to be tough! I mean, this is the equivalent of James Franco in 127 hours, realizing he needed to cut off his arm to escape the cliffs. Ah, uh, Ozzy, survival is there for Brentford. But Ozzy, you just need to prepare yourself for an afternoon of Ashley Westwood sticking his studs in your thigh. But similarly, Burnley also need to get their survival hunt back on track, because you've just lost two games at Turf Moor in a row, conceding six and scoring none. I'm guessing Sean Dice watched those games, and Ozzy probably felt like chewing off his own teeth in disgust. The good news is that historically, Brentford have lost their last five games against Burnley. I mean, you haven't actually beaten the Clarets since 1997, and you're not winning this game either. Sorry, but Burnley are bullying nice little Brentford out of all three points. Ozzy, Brentford, brace yourself. This is like trying to fight a bunch of angry orcs on steroids. Burnley are smashing you out of the building. I mean, Web Weghorst is gonna grab a couple in a 3-0 win. Yes, 3-0 Burnley win. Base, this is gonna be a massacre. Men against boys. Man United versus Tottenham. The last time Tottenham visited Old Trafford, they scored six. Yeah, that was four Tottenham managers ago. How? How has it been so long for these two clubs to have a rematch at this ground? I mean, this is like Dustin Poirier having to wait half a decade to finally avenge his defeat to Conor McGregor, right? I know Man United have since won two games at Tottenham's ground, but don't think for a second that a 6-1 result will not traumatize these footballers. I'm gonna call it. This is single-handedly Manchester United's most embarrassing ever result in the Premier League. I mean, Tottenham losing 6-1 at home to Tottenham. Uh, I'm sorry, but that result in 50 years, that should be scribbled on the tombstones of Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw. I mean, for all of you who said that Josie Mourinho was finished in 2015, well, guess what, lads? That 6-1 win at Old Trafford was in October 2020. So, uh... That's a funny looking finish, but it's weird. People won't recognize the fact, but Manchester United have actually mostly struggled against Tottenham at home. 
for 10 years. Because Tottenham picked up a shock 3 2 win at Old Trafford in September 2012 when Gareth Pale's sickening pace almost stuck an aging Rio Ferdinand into a coma. I'm guessing that was the moment where Ed Woodward decided that Rio was about as quick as a granny running for the bus. Tottenham then won on their next visit to the ground in January 2014. I mean, sure, then Man United won 3 0 in March 2015 after Rooney Boxing Gate. But after that, three consecutive narrow 1 0 wins from Man United at Old Trafford. Then Lucas Moura tears through their defences. Spurs win 3 0 in August 2018. Then there was a narrow 2 1 Man United win in Mourinho's first game in charge of Tottenham. And then finally, that 6 1 horror show. Oh, no! Old Trafford have seen one convincing win over Tottenham in 10 years. Ah, lads. Whereas before, sure, this club used to drink Tottenham like a milkshake. I mean, you could have given them a two goal lead and still win the match by three goals. But for the last decade, you've probably enjoyed this fixture about as much as I enjoy sharing a bath with my mum. Ah, uh, no. And let's not forget that Tottenham are suddenly in a great moment. They've just won the last two Premier League matches by an aggregate score of 9 0. With Matt Doherty. I'm sorry. I don't know if Antonio Conte has just replaced his pre match happy meal with three bowls of pasta and a cup of horse steroids, but he's suddenly looking like a world-class superstar. Just like Victor Moses, Conte is turning this chunky dud into a right-back machine. He looks like Dublin's answer to Cafu. I'm going for another Tottenham win. Harry Kane is no longer sulking like a teenager in Slytherin. So yeah, watch a Conte tactical masterclass and a 2-0 Tottenham win. Just you wait. Chelsea versus Newcastle. This is a fitting game this weekend because it's a passing of the torch. Give it five years and Newcastle are 100% unequivocally replacing Chelsea in the top four. I mean, this is a bit like when Man City used to play Arsenal after the takeover. Offering Arsene Wenger a glimpse into the eyes of the team who would eventually ruin him. I mean, for a former invincible like him, it was probably a bit hard to take that threat seriously when he saw Mark Hughes in the dugout. And similarly, I don't think Thomas Tuchel is exactly going to have a nervous breakdown staring into the eyes of Chris Wood. But trust me, this swap over is coming and soon. As for this game, Newcastle are on an incredible run of form. And this squad is probably the most confident set of players in the bottom half. I mean, Bruno Gamares just spelled it in a Zlatan-esque scorpion kick. I mean, what? Newcastle fans aren't used to watching that. Newcastle midfielders aren't supposed to be able to do that. Christ, well, if Isaac Hayden tried to do it, he'd probably break his foot. I mean, even the good Newcastle midfielders in the past Kevin Nolan, top footballer. There's more chance of him flying to the moon than pulling off a scorpion bicycle kick. Listen, the first game between these two this season was at St. James's Park, and Chelsea dominated 79% possession of the ball. And Steve Bruce really watched the opposing right back score a hat trick. This, this will be a massive improvement on that, and you know what? I reckon Newcastle will nick a 1 1 draw, which will be their first result at Stamford Bridge since May 2012. You know, a, a full decade ago. But still, I'm calling it. 1-1, Everton vs Wolves. All right, so we've got a team who just lost 5-0 coming up against a side who just won 4-0. Can you imagine the different levels of confidence inside this ground? I'm guessing in pre-match, the away dressing room will be bouncing. I mean, they'll be whacking Nelly on the speakers, strutting around the showers with their dongs out, while the Everton players, oh my, they'll, they'll probably get off the bus looking like cows who've just booked an Uber to the slaughterhouse. Ah, they all look pretty miserable. Oh, Everton, even when things were going well, they never really ever enjoyed playing Wolves. I mean, they have I haven't had a comfy home win over Wolverhampton Wanderers by more than one goal since 2003. Since then, it's just been narrow, scrappy games. Listen, Everton need a win here. I'm guessing Frank Lampard would happily break off his thumb and feed it to his cat to guarantee a vital three points. But if you look at the symmetry, I mean, the last time Everton lost 5-0, they, uh, they, they beat Wolves at home in their previous match. 1-0 Richarlison penalty. So if you're someone who believes in horoscopes and witch doctors, then uh, I guess that's a good sign, right? But no, someone who lives in reality will tell you that this demoralized bunch of Everton players will lose against the same team who ruined Ben Foster's vlog. Honestly, Daniel Podence will run the show. Wolves will grab a 1-0 win, leaving Everton stuffed in the relegation zone. Yeah, England's number one goalkeeper in the relegation zone in March. I mean, if Aaron Ramsdale doesn't have the gloves and guitar, uh, something is seriously wrong. I mean, next season, Champions League versus Championship. It would be like Roy Hodgson for the World Cup, benching Joe Hart to pick John Ruddy in nets. Leeds versus Norwich. This is a mammoth, huge six-pointer clash. I mean, I'm guessing Johnny Howson will spend this weekend glued to his TV in some grubby Middlesbrough flat. I mean, he's a guy who spent a combined 20 years of his life at both clubs. So this, uh, it's a bit sad. It's like watching your former wives box each other to death on the edge of a cliff. Ah, oh, it's just very, very intense. Leeds under Jesse Marsh, we're gonna see no improvement, really. I'm sorry, but this guy gives me Bob Bradley vibes. Whether rightly or wrongly, there's something about an American accent which just doesn't get taken seriously in the Premier League. I know it's unfair, but it, it, it's just a fact. 
and I don't think Ted Lasso has helped matters. Ellen Road needs to be a fortress for this game, but Dean Smith has had longer with these Norwich players. You know what? I'm gonna go for a Norwich win. It's gonna be a scrappy, tense match, and yeah. 1-0 Norwich win via a last minute Timu Puki penalty. This is going to be a dark afternoon for Leeds. Southampton versus Watford. Well, it looks like that Southampton run of form is characteristically being flushed down the loop. As Ralph Hasnoodle once again demonstrates that he is the most unpredictable manager in the league. I mean, a month ago, they were stopping Man City's winning run, picking up a win at Tottenham before grinding out a point at Old Trafford, with him once again being linked with the hot seat at Man United. Ah, now, they've conceded fourth in the park and just lost at home to Newcastle. I mean, come on! As for Watford, oh, they're done and dusted. Roy Hodgson should be sitting at home by the fire with a hot chocolate in his hand. Not watching Ben Foster get lobbed twice at Mother New. I mean, considering he's a former West Brom and Birmingham goalkeeper, I'm guessing the home fans made sure that was the worst night of his life. Right, I hope he didn't have his vlog camera on the bench. But anyway, uh, here I'll go for a pretty stale, scrappy 1 1 draw. West Ham versus Aston Villa. So, Aston Villa, all of a sudden, they've just gone from being an utter horror show of losing to both Newcastle and Watford without scoring a goal. I mean, I was questioning Steven Gerrard's tactics, but ever since... Oh, three games played, three clean sheets, and nine goals scored. With Philip Coutinho looking every inch a better footballer than Jack Grealish ever was. It's just a mental turnaround. West Ham, meanwhile, are stuttering. They just had a midweek trip to Spain, where they lost their 13th game of the season, so... ah, uh, Yeah, I think Gerrard is once again going to sink his teeth into West Ham. I mean, this is a man who once ruined their FA Cup dreams. Now, he's about to drag their Champions League hopes into a toilet bowl filled with wet cement. Coutinho is going to utterly run the show, utterly eating deck and rice for tea, and yeah, 2-0 Villa win. Just you watch. Arsenal versus Leicester. Here's a weird stat. Arsenal haven't managed to beat Leicester City at the Emirates Stadium in nearly three years. Remember that Mesut Ozil masterclass in a 3-1 win in October 2018? Arguably his last great match in an Arsenal shirt. Again, this should be a tough game, but come on. It's a team fourth in the league versus something languishing in 12th. There are no excuses. This should be a routine and comfortable gutters win. Especially now that Jamie Vardy's injured again. So yeah, I'll go for a 2-0 home win. Very straightforward. Anyway, that's it. What do you think in the comments? What do you think? Anyway, that's it. Let me know. What do you think? Right, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.